We are here today because nearly a decade of war has been taking place, and our armed forces, you and your families, have done everything you've been asked to do. You've been everything we could ask you to be. You have done your duty. And as a grateful nation, we must do ours. We have to make sure that America is serving you as well as you have served us. This isn't just a military or this is not just a moral obligation. This is a matter of national security. With millions of military spouses, parents, and children sacrificing as well, the readiness of our armed forces depends on the readiness of our military families. As Commander-in-Chief, I am determined to do everything in my power to make sure that we are fulfilling that request from our troops, that we are taking care of their families. And that's why over the past two years, we've made major investments. More military housing, more child care, new schools for our military kids, more counseling and career support for spouses, more help for those tireless caregivers, dramatic increases in veterans' health care, and helping hundreds of thousands of veterans and family members pursue their education through the post-9-11 GI Bill. And that's why I ordered this government-wide effort a presidential study directive, to bring together the resources of the federal government for this mission. And today, I'm proud to announce that for the first time ever, supporting the well-being of our military fam families will be a priority not just for the Departments of Defense, the Departments of Veterans Affairs, but all across the federal government. That's why all these Cabinet folks are here today. Sixteen members of my Cabinet have committed their departments and agencies to making military families one of their highest priorities. And we're focusing on four areas. The things you said mattered most to you, whether you're Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine, or Coast Guard, active, guard, or reserve, a veteran or a member of a family of a fallen. We didn't wait for today to launch these efforts. Many of these efforts have already been underway. And that includes innovative new partnerships so that in tough fiscal times, our government is more efficient and serves you better. So let me just list our, our, our primary areas of focus. First, we are putting new emphasis on the quality of life for our military families. The Departments of Defense and Health and Human Services, for example, have joined forces to improve community mental health services and prevent suicides. A new office in the Treasury Department is working to protect military families from abusive practices like predatory lending. It turns out that military families uh, are more subject to some of these financial scams than just about any other group. The Agricultural Department is expanding its support for families in rural areas, a disproportionate number of our military families come from rural areas or are stationed in rural communities. The Interior Department will use our national parks to help our wounded warriors recover. And we are going to remain relentless, not just at VA, but at HUD and HHS and across the government, in our fight to end homelessness among our veterans. We have to have zero tolerance for homelessness among our veterans. Second, we're putting a new focus on the education and development of our military children, most of whom go to public schools. So for the first time ever, the Department of Education will make military families a priority for some of its grant programs. And that's going to give states and communities new incentives to address the unique needs of military children. The Interior Department, which is already one of the largest federal employers of young people, will create more opportunities 
like summer jobs for young people from military families. And today, we are renewing our call for every state to adopt the Interstate Compact, which makes it easier for military children to transfer between schools and succeed in the classroom. Third, we're redoubling our efforts to help military spouses pursue their educations and careers. As Michelle said, we've brought in the Departments of Labor and Commerce and the Small Business Administration. We're going to help spouses to get that degree, find that job, or start that new business. And finally, we're going to keep increasing child care for our military moms and dads with young children. This is not just a job for the Department of Defense. As Michelle said, the Departments of Education, Health and Human Services, and Agriculture are now helping, too. And working together, we believe we can find new child care options for tens of thousands of military children. So these are just some of the nearly 50 specific commitments that my administration is making today. In other words, we're not simply reaffirming our responsibility to our military families. We are upping our game. We also recognize that this can't be a mission for government alone. Government has its responsibilities. But 1% of Americans may be fighting our wars. 100% of Americans need to be supporting our troops and their families. You see, this is one of those challenges and one of those moments uh, when we have to remember what unites us as Americans, what we can achieve together, and what we owe to each other especially to those who serve and sacrifice so we can live free and be safe. I want every service member who's deployed to know that when you're over there taking care of the country that you love, your country is back here taking care of the families that you love. I want every military wife and husband to know that we're going to help you keep your family strong and secure. I want every military kid to know that we're going to be there for you, too, to help you grow and to live your dreams. I want our Gold Star families to know that this nation will never forget and will always honor the supreme sacrifice that your family has made to our nation. And I want every single American to remember that as the beneficiaries of their service, each of us has an obligation, a sacred duty, to care for those who have borne the battle. These are my commitments. These are Michelle and Jill's commitments. These are my administration's commitments, and they must be America's commitments. And as long as I am president, we're going to keep working to fulfill those commitments for all who serve. Thank you very much, everybody. God bless you.